racing toward us. Na na na. Na na. Hey, 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 it's Chrissy Lulu. So, today, as promised, we're going to be talking about how to find time for your art. So, with life, it can be sometimes hard to find out where stuff can fit in your life and organize yourself. And when you're doing art challenges, organizing yourself is one of the most important things for you to do. So, one way I kind of make sure is to get my stuff done is I do keep it in my mind every day. We need to get this done. We need to get this done. And then instead of saying like at noon I will do this, I will just get get myself to do it and do it all the way through. No matter how tired I am, no matter how not in the mood I am for it. I, I get up, I get myself up, I put myself by the bootstraps and do it. Um, while I was at my aunt's house this weekend, on the drive over, I did the second dog that you're going to see today, which was the Border Collie. I did him in the car, so it was a six hour drive all the way over there, so we had tons of just dead time in that car. And this may work for you, this may not work for you. I know a lot of people do get car sick very easily. And if you are one of those people who do get car sick very easily, I would not recommend trying to draw in the car. And drawing the car can mess up your quality of it, maybe. Um, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, kind of the bumpiness of the road can make it harder kind of keep the line straight and the draw and make your marks but yeah um then again when we got there second day while well, everyone was kind of setting up for the party I just kind of was getting in the way I felt so I ended up slipping upstairs and then just getting out my my work and then doing it just getting it all done so there, there was free time there I wasn't doing anything I just eaten breakfast when I was there, we were going to have to do a lot of stuff later today, and I found that little block of free time, and I took it and used it. And then Sunday, it's kind of a weird day for me, I ended up doing my drawing very late. I didn't do it in the car, I just I was not feeling it. I, I was doing some other art in the car, but it was all digital, and I had to clean my pig cage, and I also kind of got a new pieced my big cage, so that was kind of cool. I had to set all that up and I was doing more stuff for them. And I didn't really get done with that stuff till late. So I didn't end up doing my dog until very late. So as you're going to see my dog for this week or that dog kind of was done very late, so the lighting might be kind of iffy. Um, but yeah, um, kind of in schedules, even when you're really busy, you can find kind of pockets of free time, even if you might not think you have these pockets, you do. It's, I really don't find it too hard to kind of find these pockets and to utilize them to the best of my ability. Um, I think that's kind of the way I've been able to do all these pro projects and everything with college and balancing it all. I'm not feeling like doing homework, but I don't have any work at the moment because it's summer vacation, so it's just mainly work that I have to kind of work around. If I don't feel like doing homework, I can just kind of pull out my art, work on that, especially if I have a challenge going on, which I did in October of last year when I was doing Inktober and I did this year at the beginning of more May which kind of was a bit hard because it was kind of around the finals and everything so I had to kind of juggle two big projects at the same time kind of like getting ready to wrap up my, at the end of my year and 
this art project that I decided to do. So, I mean, if you really feel like you don't have the time to handle something, I'd say maybe push off your little art challenge for later. Um, this, you can see other artists doing this. Um, I can think of Bailey J was pushing off, I think it was the sketchbook slam or something. I can't remember. She pushed off something so that she didn't have a lot of artwork to do during the month preparing for her big wedding and everything. Which I think it's very smart to kind of juggle how busy you are with the kind of art you're doing. Um, but doing art challenges, I think, are really beneficial. They can help you get into the groove of kind of drawing and creating an illustration and working some thoughts every day and getting your hand practicing every day so you don't lose skill, you're building skill every single day. So when you're continuing to work, you're continuing to put work in and you're continuing to help build your hand skill. And with this, you'll get better, of course. Um, and then it also helps you get into the habit of drawing every day, which is a very good habit to do it, get into if you want to be more than just a casual artist and if you want to fill <laughs> sketchbooks, which hopefully you all do. Um, one thing that this challenge has really helped me with is actually getting a bunch of pages done in the sketchbook of mine. So I'm using my really small sketchbook that I started last December and I hadn't really used it too much. In fact, so far... With what I've done... <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I forgot to do the color apparently, but um, yeah. Um, but what I've done so far with the sketches of the dogs every day, I've done just as many pages for this challenge as I had done before this challenge. <laughs> and I don't really touch my sketchbooks often, which is a really bad habit. I suggest everyone should try and get in the habit of using a sketchbook. Which, as I mentioned before, Sketchbook Slam is a really good way to get into a practice that I'm really in that good practice, and I haven't actually done the Sketchbook Slam challenge yet, but I have really wanted to for a long time. I just don't have the time, and I haven't really had a lot of money as of late, but getting back to work kind of helped me build up some more money, so maybe I can get some more things I ended up buying. I don't know if I'd call them art supplies. I bought some stuff from ACMO the other day. I bought shrinky dinks, which I can do a video of those. I kind of want to make keychains. I want to try and do those with the shrinky dinks. But yeah, so I got shrinky dink. I got an exacto knife. Uh, this been something that I see people using a lot with washi tape when they're putting washi tape on stuff. I use exacto knives now. I have a utility knife, which is kind of clunky to use if you're trying to get little exact details. So that's I bought the cheapest one I could find. Um, I got a T square. It was a really it's a small cheap T square. If you ever watch Holly Brown, she recommends using these. Um, I think I I think it could be very useful. It wasn't much, so I decided to pick up that and. See-through erasers, or not erasers, see-through, see-through rulers, the ones that have the grids on them. Those can be very helpful and can actually do some similar things to what T-squares can do. Um, they show you both horizontal and vertical lines, and it really helps you kind of get your ruler just right on your paper. Um, I mean, it's. I think it would take probably a little bit more angling to get it just right than with just the T square. But you know, I do. I do really like 
that. Even though Anna was actually very happy about it, I wasn't originally going to. I needed it for a class and I got the wrong one at first. Yeah, um, I wasn't very happy about that. But I was happy kind of later on when I finally did get to use it. But yeah, um, got that. I actually bought more Astro Bright paper because I had an ADC one. I kind of realized it was just normal paper and it's not um, the cardstock that my other Astro Brights are in. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that, but I hope I can have some fun with it. There were neon colors and I couldn't resist. Um, and my goal for the summer is really to just keep myself busy and hopefully next month I found some play in my basement that used to be my mom's beauty one last friend but um if you don't know I'll do a video on it in the future I promise I've taken a couple of ceramics classes at my college and I have made some stuff that I really enjoyed so I really do hope to kind of show those off and then show off some of my previous pieces. But yeah, um, so just gonna recap right here what dogs I did this week. I started off with the Japanese chin, then I moved on to the husky, then I believe I moved on to my border collie. Right? <laughs> We moved on to the Border Collie and then the Shiba Inu Sharpay. Oh no, I did some more of it on Monday. I'm sorry, I did the Sharpay on Sunday. I'm losing track of days, guys, help me. But yeah, and then today, Tuesday, I did the Italian Greyhound, which was actually a ton of fun. I really was pleased with a couple of the ones this week. I think my favorites by far were the Sharpay. The Husky turned out okay, I will admit, I liked him. And the Italian Greyhound. The Italian Greyhound was one of my favorites. Um, I really kind of do like how it turned out, and I'm kind of surprised it turned out so well. But yeah. If you guys want to join in, remember the hashtag is Dog Days of Summer. Um, I would love to see what you do. You can start at any time, it doesn't have to be at the beginning of the month, it can be in the middle of the month, it just has to be in the summer. Hence, Dog Days of Summer. Um, you know, after drama, realistic like me, you can go and make them more um, symbolic. You can stylize them. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to do it exactly like me. I just kind of want to see if anyone else really wants to join me in this. Sorry I didn't get a video up Saturday, but this Saturday I'm going to have a good one, I hope. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. Hope you enjoyed this video and like it, comment, subscribe if you want to see more, click the bell icon if you want to be notified if you want to upload. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.